kind of go with like skinnier socks than you would think to, to let, your circul let your feet circulate. I used to pack in like two pairs of smart wool socks and like tight bike shoe. Yeah. That's kind of the worst thing you can do. Or just put like a little nylon. It's just something. Something to cut the wind a little bit. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm with you. I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. So friends, how did I feel about this? How did I feel about this? How did I feel? I, I felt I went very quiet and told the case. What did I tell you when we walked out of here on Wednesday? I said anecdotally, what happens? That happens. Anecdotally, you guys have a highly skewed distribution on your exams. You see that there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anecdotally, that always has happened. Statistically, I've been doing this almost 20 years. Every single term, first that exam, you guys hand it in. People freak out, totally fine, totally fine. It's definitely a new, a new game, right? It's definitely a new way of thinking. But I tell you, when I go home and look at this, I guarantee, I guarantee this is gonna happen. And it did, look at the skew on this. Remember that skew probably did in class, the, the, the Hildebrand's Pearson second? Remember the number that he said if you get away from? 0.2, any skew bigger than 0.2 or less than negative 0.2 is, is kind of skewed. You, you guys are kind of skewed. Ridiculously skewed. Now, negative just means that most of the data is over here, and the average pulls back here. You can see that in the in the uh, chart. I call you mu instead of x bar because you're my entire population in grades, so I call you guys the population. Your average was a 37, but your median was a 43. How can that be? How can that be? Because some folks got zero. There are some people that haven't taken it yet, number one, and one person hasn't been here at all. I have no idea what happened to them. And they've got a zero as well. So by definition, your average is gonna, gonna suck because of that. So I'm not gonna come in here and tell the class average is a 37, because that's not a fair way of reporting it. A mode of 44 and a median of 43 is a pretty interesting way of looking at it. Not to mention the fact that those are probably gonna become 48s and 49s by the end of Wednesday, more on that in a second. You see what I'm getting at here? Sigma, remember how I, I said I called you guys my population, so I call you mu. Since it's a population, I call the standard deviation sigma instead of s because that's a population standard deviation. And it's, it's 13, that's, a, that's about on average what it usually is from term to term. It's fairly wide, especially because of the zeros, they tend to pull it bigger than it would be otherwise. The German class question, I know freaked a lot of people out. So I collected some data on that too. Collected some data. Three out of five of you got it 100% correct. That's the one about they, they, they tank their exam and the teacher adds 25 points per exam to that problem. Three out of five of you got it 100% correct. Three out of 10 of you got it half right, and only one in 10 of you got it completely wrong. So, and again, again, I, that's what happens. The other class, here's what happened with them. Same question, uh, right there. Half of them got it completely right, almost half of them got it half right, and only 4% of them got it completely wrong. So again, I like looking at these numbers because it's a nice way to step back and analyze you guys as a whole. I can't look at it one student at a time. It's impossible for me to do that. I would go insane. I would go insane. First of all, I have to track down this person I can't find. I give it up on that. Keep sending progress reports out, eventually drop the class. But if I look at it from an average point of view, that's better, huh? If I look at it from an average point of view, it's a much, it's a much easier way to deal with it. And then I put a box plot up top. Why do I like box plots? Why do I like box plots? Have we got other box plots? Have we talked about, we, we haven't drawn one yet, have we? No, Mm, see, I, I, thought we were, I thought we had done that, both classes, slightly different pacing. We had done it with the other class, not with you guys. That's okay, that's all right. We're, we'll, we'll do a box plot first thing. Remember the five number summary from last class? Min, Q1, median, Q3, max. Remember that from the last class? The box plot is a picture of that summary. It's a picture of that summary. So the median is this guy right here at 43. Here are your quartiles. Here's your max, here's technically your min, but it's an outlier, so this would be considered the normal min. Now why does this make me so happy? And I know we haven't seen a box plot yet, we'll see it in about five minutes when we actually draw your box plot from the snowfall data. But Danny, go, please. Because um, a lot of the concentration of data is on the higher end. 25% of you, 
got between a 43 and a 46. 25% of you got between a 46 and a 52. Remember, the highest you can get is a 50. There were a couple extra bonus points floating around that you could, you could attack. The one question was, which of the five things could the CDC probably not have known? And a bunch of you got it, the parameter. You can't know what the parameter value is. They measure every single kid to know that. So I'm stoked because 25% of you are right here. Now, do you see? Check this out, too. You see this compared to this? What does that mean about the lower half of the data versus the upper half of the data? It's more, Andrea? There's a greater variety. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Way more variable. Perfect. You can get that by looking at the width of the box plot. And I feel a little silly now, Tim. Thank you for mentioning that. We haven't done box plots. Damn it. Yes, you're right. We haven't. So we'll, we'll, we'll draw your guys' state data again on the board with the box plot and add the data to it, kind of like we're doing right here. I personally like to have the box plot plus the histogram all together in one place because you can see the variability and the variety as well as a little more refineness in the actual, in the actual histogram down here at the bottom. So I like having them both. So how am I feeling about this? Eh? Hell yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm stoked. And that, that combined with the fact that the exam's not done yet, as you guys might remember me mentioning. What are you going to do for Wednesday? We're going to get some points made up. Let me, let me log on real quick here. <coughs> We are going to go to the rainy day page. Yes? It's going to load eventually. We have to turn, we have to wait the, uh, the hamster up. It's turning the wheel that makes it. There we go. S rule. We're going to go to the, we're going to go to the rainy day page. I'll put, a, I'll put a better link on it for you too. But right now, you can get to that rainy day page through week three. I'll have it more obvious for you guys when I get back to the, the, the uh, office. You might remember that there's a rainy day project he's talking. Some of you have used it already, most of you have it, most of you won't, and that's worth five extra credit points. Each of the first two exams, though, the in-class portions of the exams, you can correct up to five points on that and resubmit it and get full credit back on those. Up to five points, okay? It's 10% of the actual in-class in class grade. Make sure you read the entire thing on the coupon before you submit it to make sure you get the points, because you won't get the points unless you do everything exactly as it says. Most notably, I had to add this about three years ago, the corrections must be correct. I didn't used to have that on there. People were submitting wrong answers, demanding points. When I said no, they said why? You never said they had to be right. I said, thank you, America, for raising a bunch of lawyers. And then I put that line on there. So anyway, just make sure they're correct. Otherwise, we'll just keep it back to you until you get it right. I like, I chuckle, I'm not gonna lie to you, I chuckle. So I like this because this means the exam isn't over yet. When I take the exam and make part of it out of class, part of it in class, and part of it correctable, it ends up lasting like two weeks, which is 20% of the course. So you're constantly thinking about this while we're moving on to new stuff. I like that. I kind of like that idea of, of, of cumulative learning and, and revisiting ideas. There is no uh, coupon for the out of class parts because the idea of the coupon is to try to take some of that agenda away from you. Like when you go into the exam, it's a, it's a math test. We, we know that. It's a math test. So you got that agenda, you know, you got that, you got that ups, you got that, that angst that you go in with. This hopefully alleviates some of that. Hopefully there was no angst with the out of class part. How was it? Decent? Decent? Yeah. Hopefully you had plenty of time to work on it. You could sit with each other. You could use Google. You could use any resources you wanted to. I mean, honestly, like I said, I would do every assessment that way, but people keep telling me not to. Students keep saying we like having the in class parts too, so I keep including them. So, yeah, good. Victory's good. Chicken's good. Yeah, they're laying like one egg every two days now. They're getting old. That that day was from last year. So anyway, there we go. That's uh, that's where we are so far. So yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Highly skewed distribution. I would be very very nervous if this was bell shaped because it'd be centered at 25, and I'd be like, what the hell did I do wrong in this test? What was I asking him to do? Something obviously. I made a few more videos um, over the weekend pertaining to uh, one or two people, it wasn't in this class, it was the other class, put notes on, on by the German question. We have never seen questions like this before. I'm like, actually, we have. So I made videos to accompany those problems and linked them up to YouTube. So if you're interested, for example, the standard deviation in the German class, we talked about this already, it doesn't change. It, it's unchanged, completely unchanged. I made two videos to go along with that problem now. Not the German problem, but the homework question that it comes from. One uses Excel and one's me at the board working algebra. So if, you're, if, you, if you care as to why it's unchanged, which I don't expect any of you to actually care, but if you do, you can see both an Excel explanation and also an a, a algebra-based explanation. So I did a few of those yesterday. 
We don't need them. Another nice resource to have in the back. Cool? How we feel? Got your progress reports from me? Yeah? Uh, you know those yesterday. Hey, after I got these in the, in the grade book. Took a while to actually find the time to finish the grading of this over the weekend. A lot of work to do on Saturday. Last good weekend. Got to write those labels. They're not wet. So. Cool? Yes? How we doing? Yeah? You all right? You guys look like week five. I'm not going to lie to you. Looks like week five in here. It looks like it's slower than week five. All right. Let's fire this guy down.